it is indeed a great privilege to introduce the legend that is professor tempton udwagia ex chairman cmas center of excellence for minimally invasive surgery training emeritus professor of surgery grand medical college and jj hospitals past consultant and head department of minimally invasive surgery pd hinduja hospital consultant surgeon at parsi general hospital and bridge candy hospital there are two ways to introduce uh, such a visionary one is by listing his uh, academic achievements and another is by bringing to life in technicolor his character and personality i will attempt the latter because uh, it's too long for listing his academic uh, achievements i was in awe of the name professor tempton udwadia long before i ever met him uh mainly since we frequently heard baba dr nitu manke speak almost reverently about him and whenever i have met him i have been repeatedly overwhelmed by his simplicity and pure outlook towards life and a very good connection with a common man which made him made me think of him not only as a successful surgeon but as a successful human being this great surgeon was trained in india under uh, professor sen after which he underwent further training in the royal college of england and edinburgh he is very proud of his uh, education in india he returned to india to jj hospital to be precise and has educated created and inspired thousands of surgeons surgeons since then to date he is a very passionate teacher with a penchant for practical uh, practical progress in surgery and in bringing new technology to rural india his life story is synonymous with the progress and transformation of surgery in india it is common knowledge that he is very sensitive to the plight of poor patients and most of his efforts have been to reduce sick days of a daily wager an example is when the there was introduction of laparoscopy in the western world and india obviously could not get the laparoscope because there was uh, too much of a duty levied on imported uh, medical equipment he himself went to germany bought a laparoscope smuggled it in and used it to diagnose 300 patients uh, in the jj ward so this was the magnanimity uh, of this person he has traveled extensively in rural areas teaching minimally invasive surgery to rural surgeons but what is astounding is his humility and respect when he says that each time he went there he learned more than what he taught he performed the first laparoscopic surgery in jj in india in 1990 um, and he gives the credit to the whole team uh in jj he has been elected president of several national and international societies he was honored with the padma shri national award in 2006 and uh, padma bhushan in 2017 he has been i think the first surgeon honored with the order of the british empire by her majesty queen elizabeth uh, ii and the distinction of honorary fellowship by american college of surgeons the albert einstein foundation celebrating celebrated the centenary of einstein theory of relativity by nominating 100 visionaries of which professor tempton udwadia was one he has obviously received uncountable awards innumerable research papers presentations many presentations over 50 years and he has authored many chapters and two landmark books on laparoscopic surgery he maintains at this age that a surgeon should remain fit and he is fit he has as much of a passion for playing golf as he does for surgery a salute to this inimitable octogenarian professor tempton udwadia the entire manke family particularly alka the respected panelists and the orator dr reddy even at my age i learned a lot about innovation from him and i can imagine what impact this must have been to young people who could get a chance to have this entire oration he gave scripted and handed out to them
the only truth in surgery is change. And in my 65 years of surgery, I've seen the entire gamut of change that occurs, has occurred in these years. And I think that in these 65 years, there has been more change in surgery than perhaps all the millennia preceding it. Today, people think that minimal excess surgery may be the end word in surgical progress. Nothing could be further from the truth. It was uh, John Hunter who said over 300 years back that surgery with the advance of knowledge, please realize advance of knowledge, not advance of surgery, will ultimately become knifeless and bloodless. And I can safely predict that surgeons in their thirties and forties today will not use a knife or an artery forceps because the surgery at that time will be by mini robots on nanos were smaller than an atom. And that is the progress which I feel will occur through innovation within the next 20 to 30 years. I have great fondness and association with Nitu. We spent so many hours in the surgeon's room together in two hospitals, the Breach Candy Hospital and the Hinduja Hospital. And each meeting, I mean, every Friday we were there the whole day from morning to late evening, because it was my operation day at Hinduja. And on intermittent days, we'd meet at Breach Candy. But the sessions on Friday were unforgettable. Neetu and I would be happy not to go to the lunchroom. And I would have stacks of bachelor soup packets. And Neetu would have stacks and stacks of tiger biscuits in his locker. <laughs> And we shared the soup and the tiger biscuits almost every after every operation. And we talk about so many things. Need to talk about his dreams. His dreams that India should be on the forefront of medical progress. His dreams that we are not subservient to anyone. And I heard the previous speaker say that he burned the candle at both ends. And I told him that Neetu, you're burning your candle at both ends. But his reply was, alas, my friends, and alas, my foes, it won't last the night. But believe me, it casts such a wondrous light. And Nitu's life was to cast a wondrous light. Nitu was like a meteor. He dazzled everyone around him. Everybody had to stop and look at him. If Nitu wore a red shirt, it was the reddest, reddest red shirt in Bombay. If you touch, if need to twirl his mustache and you touch the tip, you'll be sure that it will pierce your finger. That was Nitu Manke. He, he was a person all by himself and he stood out all by himself. And we both had a common lineage. Nitu was a boxer, I was a boxer. Neetu was good in, cricket, in football. I was the cap captain of football. I was the captain of cricket. Neetu was an athlete in long distance. I was a sprinter. And we both gelled so together throughout. Then age was no difference to us because Neetu came up to my age and I came down to Neetu's age. And uh, I would tell Neetu about my dreams, that my dream was that the advance of surgery should be made available to every Indian, wherever he was, whatever the socioeconomic content. And when you talk of innovation, I would like to say a word about surgical Indian innovation. In my travels to remote areas, to small towns, to rural areas, to tribal areas, I have been totally flabbergasted by the innovation of the Indian surgeon. He can do the same performance with hardly any finance, with hardly any instrumentation. He has his technician as his first assistant. 
He has an untrained nurse as his anesthetist. He has uh, Bunsen burner uh, for, not Bunsen burner, what you, primus stove on which he sterilizes his instruments, but he delivers. I've seen with my eyes in a tribal area, an acute appendix of three days duration where the patient walked for three days to find a surgeon. And this surgeon, a young surgeon, who boiled his instruments on a, on a stove, primus stove, and he put in his gloves after the instruments were sterilized, put in an extra pair for me to use, and he did the procedure better than I could ever do it in a five-star hospital. This is the tribute to India. So when we talk about lack of innovation in India, I have a word of protest. You go to rural India and see what innovation is by the Indian. We cannot cope with the American innovation because we do not have the finances. But not for a moment, please find and remember that we do not have the capabilities. Like Nitu, I was working with Professor P.K. Sen from 1959 when I was freezing, uh, giving hypothermia to dogs for cardiac arrest which was the only way of open heart surgery there. And we were doing it in a side room of the theater. And right up to 1971, Professor Sen uh, was reti uh, retired. And we went through the uh, myocardial revascularization by acupuncture. We went through the heart transplant in 1968. And believe me, we had one of the most excellent dog labs at the KM hospital where three experiments could be run or we were doing heart transplant experiments with two tables side by side. So in spite of whatever we had, I think we have been able to do as much as possible. I'm sure that the American population and the American background with the infrastructure we have would not be doing any better than what do what we do here. It's what they have in terms of infrastructure, the money that makes them run. One, one thing, uh, my daughter-in-law had a hole in the heart and she was in England. And my relatives and her relatives were happy saying that she'd be operated in England. I phoned my son and said, come back immediately your surgery will be done in India. It will be done by an Indian surgeon and it will be done by Nitu. And that, and Alka was the anesthetist for this case. So, in all fairness to whatever Nitu had looked, set out for, I think we, he has set the path for people to think big and Indians will come up. We will make it in India and we will do it. We will do it our way, the hard way, the cheap way, but we can do it. And if our remote rural surgeons can do their surgery the way they're doing it, surely all Indians can rise to the occasion. I thank you very much for your patience. Thank you. <laughs>